Hello, Hello Internet. Internet! This is Piu Piu. And this is Azrod. And we are here to show you how a solar punk way of life can bring you more happiness, make you less anxious and more connected with yourself and nature. Overall, with less capitalism. In our last video, The Meaning of Life, we explained the five vital needs of living beings. Breathing air, having water and food, having a shelter to protect you from the environment and from the predators, and having some friends, socialization, having others such as yourself. And today we are going to talk how capitalism doesn't meet your vital needs. Starting with air, since the Industrial Revolution, there have been multiple reports of the air in some of the biggest cities in the world becoming toxic for its own population. If you live in a city, you might have heard from some runners, some people that like to like run around to do sports, that wearing a mask when running is recommended because the air is so polluted in cities like Paris that if you don't wear a mask, you will simply get sick from running. Next is water. So we have uh, really greatly improved our capacity to filtrate water. We have also polluted it with a lot more microplastics and a lot more toxic waste near most of our industries, which is really problematic because it makes us dependent on a system of filtration of water that we don't have control on. So we are dependent on the dominating system, which in this case is capitalism. For the quality of water, you might know that uh, the uh, Olympic Games just ended in Paris a few days ago. Uh, and you might also have heard that the swimmers that were asked to swim in La Seine uh, kind of fell sick because the La Seine wasn't cleaned properly and uh, they had di diarrhea, basically. Even if the air is free to breathe, we have seen some dystopia that Imagine the world where the air would be not free, where basically you would need to pay to be able to breathe, so to be able to live. If you compare this to water, for example, you need water to live. Well, at least in France, water isn't free. Even if you go to a restaurant and ask water, legally they're supposed to give you water. But if you live in a building or in a house, you have a water bill to pay. So water is literally necessary to life and you literally need money to have water to live in our society. Next, food. You will probably know, but you need money to buy food. And another particularity of the capitalistic system is that most of the food you ingest, you don't always know what's inside. For example, there are some big corporations like Coca-Cola that have some part of the recipe that need to be kept secret so that it can be a trademark, so that the product can be copied because of capitalism, which means that they could technically put stuff that you don't know about that could potentially be damaging for you. For example, did you know where Coke got its name? Well, it's simple, it's actually from cocaine because at a time where we saw that cocaine was healthy and just an energizing stuff that could make you in a healthier state, Coca-Cola simply put Coke in their drink, thus the name Coke. So another really uh, not so fun part is that capitalism is run by scarcity, which means it produces more food than necessary so that the price can be set low, but it produces more food than necessary as well which means it has waste, but instead of giving it for free or using it to recreate more food, for example, which wouldn't be economically interesting, instead capitalism chooses to destroy food. For example, did you know that most uh, supermarkets bleach their waste product to be sure that nobody gets to eat it? So to summarize, we live in a world that produces enough food to end famines, but because of profits, we don't, and we destroy this, this food and let people starve. Oh, and there is now another illness, malnutrition, which causes obesity. Basically, you eat food that you're not supposed to eat in quantity you're not supposed to get, 
and you become like not healthy. Next is shelter. Do you know that you are the only animal that need to pay to live somewhere? Even if you buy a land, you're not technically owning it, you're only renting it to the state, which is why you need to pay an tax on the land. Homelessness is a rising concern in most countries in the world. Despite that, most policies are made so that it's harder to live without a home. For example, for the Olympic Games in Paris, a lot of homeless people that were living in some places in Paris were literally thrown out of the city because they didn't want the tourists to see homelessness in Paris. We have a lot of viewers coming from the United States. And did you know that there are 7% of the population that, of the United States that live in mobile homes? In the United States, having the minimum wage isn't enough to get you a studio in some places, which is crazy because you need two jobs to be able to have a shelter. And there is a pink goat behind me. <laughs> so even if you have money, you might not be able to afford a shelter that has running water and that has electricity. Next is skinship. And for that, you can think about it for yourself. When was the last time that you get to create a really close bond without being forced in the situation you were in? Let me make it a little bit more clear. When you were young, you were so socializing, mostly in school. You were forced to be in school. Otherwise, it's illegal in a lot of countries. And once you are a grown-up, you need a job and most of the time you are socializing at your jobs. This is highly problematic because it doesn't help you create a sense of belonging outside close circle of people which tend to share the same point of view which can lead to social reproduction of the same pattern such as workers saying workers and rich people saying rich people. For example, in England, the richest families of a few centuries ago are also the richest families nowadays, despite it being one of the first countries to implement capitalism. So if capitalism would make poor people richer, well, we would have seen it by now. Also, concerning socialization, we see nowadays one of the highest rates of depression worldwide, and a lot of people are really sad because they are not able to find meaning to their life and also loved ones and they appear really lonely. Which explains the rise of misogynistic acts of terrorism against women that end them in them being murdered. To summarize, capitalism brought you polluted air, microplastic filled water, Enough food to feed the entire world, but not enough profit to be willing to do so. Shelters for everybody, but actually because you can't really afford a shelter at minimum wage, well, mobile homes, I guess. And a lot of depression because everyone nowadays is more connected with their work and their phones than connected with other people. The simple fact that you need to work to earn money, to achieve your basic vital needs, makes you a slave of capitalism. Because you can't survive without working for the capitalistic system. Now the question will be how to escape this really shitty situation. Well, our answer to this is think outside of the box capitalism puts you in and try to find stuff that will make you happy. If we have a device on this, we would say that whatever you end up thinking of, just keep in mind that you should be kind, you should be forgiving, and you should be clear about what you are trying to achieve. If you stick with this, you should be probably good. We love you and appreciate you. See you. Bye.